Hello, friends. I hope you're doing well on this fine day. I've got no idea when you're watching this. I hope it's a fine day for you. We're going to start talking about itemization, which I've decided to break up into some categories. We have starting items, and then we have literally every other item choice is going to be grouped up in the second video. The reason for that is because when most people think of itemization, they're thinking of that second category. They're asking, what boots do I buy? Do I get a four staff, a Yules? How do I decide what I need? Do I need a Ghost Scepter? That's all very true. It is quite important to be good at that. And it, you know, it does lead to being able to win or lose a game if you buy the wrong items. But as a direct result of that, many people overlook starting items, you know, because it's just, oh, it's just 600 gold. You just buy some tangos and stuff, right? Wrong. This is the most important 600 gold you will spend in this game. The lane is the first thing you do. It builds up into everything else in the game. So if you have a bad laning stage, it's very tough to come back in the future. And even if you're meant to win a lane, if you buy the wrong items, that can really hurt your chances overall at winning a game. So we really want to understand why we are buying certain items at the start. And it's going to end up maybe easier than other itemization. Um, because once you understand what you're going for and understand the different options and why you might pick one or the other, then I think it becomes very easy and kind of cookie cutter where it's like, oh, I see this, I see this, I just get these starting items and I'm good. And it doesn't have to be much harder than that, but we just need to figure out like what that pathway is going to be. So that's what we're going to cover today. And I want to begin by explaining what our objective with these items is. When you lane, you're trading your health and mana and time to an extent to gather resources. And of course, the enemy team doesn't want you to do that. So they're doing the same thing, but they want to stop you. So they're going to hit you and you're going to hit them. So I'm going to try to trade health like this for a bit. Usually, it's very difficult for a hero to be killed from full health at the beginning of a game, right? So a level one hero at full health against another level one hero at full health, it takes a really long time to actually just kill the other hero because that's just the way the game works. But if you get a little lower and the other person is still fully, you know, healthy. I, don't, I stumbled on that for no reason. If you drop down to like 300 health or your carry drops down to 300 health and the enemy offlaner has that like, uh, you know, full 700 health, it becomes much easier to kill them. Half the work is done because they haven't healed up. That is what our starting items are trying to prevent. It is trying to stay healthy where we will not die. And like, we're trying to do the same thing. We want to, it would be great if we could kill the enemy offlane. So we want to use our spells and our attacks to try to whittle them down. And we might need mana for that. So we want to consider both our HP and mana in terms of do I have enough to attack and fight and kill them? We need to stay at this healthy point. Otherwise, we're unable to play the lane. A carry that is at, you know, 300 HP, they should recognize I'm too weak to just walk into this lane that has a lot of burst damage. So now I have to stay back. And if I'm staying back, I'm not farming. We don't want that to happen to our carry. So of course, the carry has to buy their own relevant starting items. But our starting items should also be keeping that in mind where if one of us has to be unhealthy, we want it to be ourselves. We want our carry to be fully healthy so that they can engage in the lane and try to get last hits. And we want to try to stay at a high uh, health. But if we have to leave the lane at some point for a bit, that is generally much better than if the carry had to do that. So with that in mind, I'm going to move on to start discussing some of the different items. I will try to avoid you know, specific numbers in terms of uh, explaining why you buy some of these items. I'm not going to be able to do that. I already know there's one section we're going to delve into some math, but I want it to be kind of conceptual so that when the num numbers do change, you will still know, okay, this is why I was buying this before. The numbers changed a little bit. So how does that get affected? Um, because a lot of this is just conceptual. And although the numbers change and it shifts around a bit, the concept is the same. And then you can just apply it differently how much you may want to invest your money in something. So I'm just going to go into it. And I think that part will become a little clearer as we go. First, I like to head into the client. I like to do a lot in the client just because I know everyone will have access to this if you're playing Dota. So here are heroes. You could open up a demo lobby, go into a custom lobby. Um, you could look at items that way through the shop like usual. Or if you want, you can over come over here to this learn tab, click items. You can now take a look at all the items in the game. You can press, oh, here, press like whichever one you're interested in. 
it'll give you some of the descriptions. It will, that doesn't build anything. It'll show you what they build into here or the vice versa, what builds into them. This one happens to go both ways. All of this, great place to start looking at the uh, numbers and descriptions of certain items. Now, if you want to actually test out some of the items, you can go to, like the like I said, the demo lobbies or the customs. But in terms of starting items, you don't really need to think about how, like, you don't need to practice anything or, like, see them in action. It's like, I use this and it heals me. Oh, you know, you don't really need to be in a demo lobby to see that. So just something like this, I think, is a good place to start. So let's get back to the topic of the video, starting items, our first 600 gold. This stuff keeps me up at night. That's kind of a joke, but... You know what? I'll admit it. I, I think about starting items when I sleep. Okay, I'll say it. When I'm playing a new hero, I'm like, Tango, Sal, what else? I'm making a video guide. You guys know I'm a tryhard. So how do we do that, right? How am I deciding what will we want to buy? Well, first, in every lane, there's going to be some stuff you just have to buy. It's actually not really a debate. You just recognize, oh, this is the situation. These are the items. I, I just have to buy them. And that makes it a little easier so that we can plan backwards. So from our original 600 starting gold, it's not how am I going to spend 600 gold, which can be quite a lot. Um, but we know we're going to buy a tango, for example. So subtract that. So then it becomes, how do I spend 510 gold? If I know I'm going to buy a couple other things, how do I spend this last 200 gold? And then that is a much easier um, challenge to face. Um, so we want to start by identifying the absolute must buys. And then we can work backwards from there. So we'll start with tangos because they're the classic. You have to buy a tango. I I will not accept you not buying a tango, okay? Here, this is my guide. I get to say this. You just have to buy one of these. At least one of these. Probably two. I will recommend two. I like to buy two, and I think it's good. If you buy one of these, you get three charges. You're going to be giving two to the mid lane. And I do recommend you do that. Even if you're at a level where... The mid laner sometimes buys their own tangos. I just don't think it's good to get used to playing with more tangos than you need. You know, your goal, if you're watching this, I'm sure, is to get better at support. And, you know, by getting better, you'll eventually reach a point where it is expected of the five support to give two tangos to the mid laner. Sometimes it can come one from one, uh, like one tango from both supports. I wouldn't plan on that because very few people do it. Um... So I would just get used to giving away those two tangos so that you can just play in the same conditions that you're going to be in. You don't want to develop bad habits of, you know, I used to have this like two full sets of tangos, so I was a little careless with my regen. You want to get used to playing with, you know, what you're going to be playing with. So personally, I think you should just give it to your mid laner. And, you know, if you're at a higher level where that is the norm, you just have to do it. I, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. It's just part of being a five support. Just give them the tangos. Now, once that's done, one tango is probably not enough. Something that has become more popular now is because everyone has their own courier, you can now ferry in your own items as soon as you want. So some people have been buying one set, giving two to the mid laner, and then they want some other items instead of tangos, so they buy those. And then as soon as they get some gold from like the bounty runes or the passive gold, they buy tangos as their first set of items and ferry that into lane. Now that can work. Um, I would err some like err on the side of caution on that one because if the enemy team has like a uh, nature's prophet or bounty hunter who are very good at killing couriers, if they kill your courier, you're now stuck at one tango. That can be really tough in that lane. Or if you are just in a tough lane, you know you might have had to use that tango right off the bat, like fighting for the rune, or maybe they jump to you or something, and then. If you don't have another tango ready, it's going to be a bit of an issue. Sometimes you can ask your carry, like, oh, can you give me one? And then I'll give it back when I get mine. Again, it's a pub game. Sometimes it doesn't happen. So I think getting four is generally safe, especially when you have a melee core or sorry, a ranged core, because melee carries will buy a quelling blade. And if you watch the last pulling and stacking video, and in the future, we're going to talk about some other trees you need to cut. Um... I mixed up my words there. There are just going to be some trees that you have to cut. And if you have one tango, they, they break trees. That's how we use them. You could cut one tree. But in the lane, there's going to be several trees you're going to want to cut. So if you have a ranged carry who does not buy a quelling blade, it's going to be up to you to cut all those trees. Technically, the carry can help. But again, we don't want to rely on them too much. So having four tangos 
will give you enough to cut all the trees you need to cut um, if it comes down to you. So I think just planning to spend 180 gold on tangos, just good. So let's go ahead and do that, subtract that. So now we have 420 gold left to figure out how we're going to spend it. The next item we're going to consider as a, you know, an absolute purchase or not is, I'll wait, take a guess, look through, think about it. Okay, I'm done waiting. It's the sentry ward. That might surprise some of you. And in fact, if it does surprise you, I'm glad because this is going to be a great learning opportunity. I do think the sentry ward is quite overlooked. There are two reasons we may need the sentry ward at the start of the game. And if we don't have it, we might just horribly lose the lane and then potentially the game. So if that surprises you, allow me to enlighten you on why the sentry ward is such an amazing item. Head over to the hero tab. Again, I'll give you a moment. But how many offlaners depend on invis to play? And technically not just the offlaners, you know, the fours, the... Uh, you, you can think about your side too. Do any of the safe laners or the five supports depend on invis? No, sorry, spoiler alert. It's really just the offlane and the fours. And I'm done waiting now. First answer is Sand King. Usually an offlaner. Let's consider offlaners first. Sand King, you don't necessarily know which one uh, he'll use. So whether it's Sandstorm or, you know, some play around Caustic Finale and Stun. Actually, maybe a better Sand King player can tell you um, when exactly they prefer one or the other. And you could use that to identify it. But I am unable to know for sure which one they're going to use. So I think it's important to start with the sentry in case they use Sandstorm. Sandstorm, if you look at this, has a long cooldown. And it does a lot. As long as he's in it, he's invis. It does damage. Like, it's great. It's great for him to just sit there and channel it. And it's not great for you if you just let him and do that. You need the sentry ward to be able to see him so that hopefully one of you is a ranged hero. And you can just hit him. Get some free damage. Because if he leaves the, the Sandstorm radius to hit you... Sandstorm's done. Job accomplished. Good work. And if he stays in there, he just takes a lot of damage, and soon maybe you can just dive him under Sandstorm and try to kill him. Now, if you're both melee heroes, you're going to have a really bad time, because Sand King is really good against melee heroes, so hopefully you're not. Um, and if you are, that's just a different issue. If you can chase him out of Sandstorm, and he has been going for a Sandstorm build, what does he have? He has a single stun to get last hits and zone you, and that's his escape tool as well. If he has Caustic Finale, he's not even using Sandstorm, so, you know, whatever. But if you take that away from him, it really hurts his laning stage, and it can just be great for you. You're probably even going to need to buy another Sentry or two in the laning stage, because Sand Kings, who are going to play around Sandstorm, know that that's how important it is, and they will buy Sentries for their own lane. So you need to have one as well to be able to stop him from just doing that. Now, the next hero is Weaver. I personally don't like Weaver as an offlane, but he is quite popular. Shikuchi is his bread and butter in this lane. He uses it to get some free damage off and run around, set himself up. And if you just let him do that, it's going to suck. He's actually such a fragile hero. Look at this, 520 health. Armor, you know, it's not the best. He does not want to get hit. This is why he plays around Shikuchi, because he goes invis and he's really fast. You can't hit him in that time unless you have a sentry. If you have a sentry and he runs up to you Shikuchi, you just hit him. You just hit him. That's it. You can cast your spells if you want, but you just hit him. He's such a fragile hero that if you do that a couple times, he can't just keep doing it or else he'll, uh, he'll die. So he also cares about whether sentries are in the lane. And if he sees you have one, he's going to get one. And guess what? You're going to have to get another one because you have to be able to see this guy. Dust does not work because, one, are you going to dust every single time he Shikuchis? It's like a six-second cooldown at level four. And frankly, it doesn't slow him, so like, what's the point? You see him, but he's just going to run away. You need to have that constant vision in the lane. A sentry lasts eight minutes right now. Um, just to have that constant vision so that every time he runs in, you can hit him and you know not waste your money on dust. Those two heroes, absolutely. I think you have to start with a sentry. Now, some other heroes have invis, but it's not as critical to start with a sentry. Um, for example, Clinks. I also don't really love Clinks offlane, but it happens. They don't usually level Skeleton Walk too quickly at this time. Again, that might change. Um, a lot of times they go Searing Arrow and Death Pact. Um, and they save Skeleton Walk for a little later, maybe like level 4 
onwards. Um, same with Bounty Hunter, where many people are leveling Janata level 1. I've seen some people start to do Shadow Walk level 1 sooner, so maybe Bounty Hunter is going to become a uh, hero under this category as well. But any hero that will use their invis level 1 to play the lane is going to need a sentry. Um, sorry, I don't know what I'm saying. The hard support is going to need to buy a sentry against heroes that use invis level 1. Against heroes that don't use invis level 1, you can delay your sentry purchase out of your 600 gold. So maybe with the bounty gold, you buy your sentry. Or maybe once they get closer, like Ricky, he's not going to need, he's not even going to have invis until level 6. So you don't really need to purchase a sentry until then. Same with, you know, Nick's assassin. Or like I said, these guys who aren't really going to level it up till later. We're not really going to be laning against invokers or TAs. Uh, these heroes that also have invis, but they're not really in the bottom lane usually. The Hawk, special mention. Beastmaster's Hawk is actually worth kind of a good amount of gold. So I have been playing around buying a sentry to start to try to kill off his Hawks when they come out. I don't know if that's worthwhile yet, so I'm not going to fully encourage that. So stick with the original message. Any hero that uses invis to lane, and then potentially Beastmaster. You heard it here first. Maybe it'll become a thing. I don't know. After that, what else? Why else might be might me blah 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 blah? Why else why <laughs> why else might we buy a sentry? Let me pop this up from our last video. And move my camera around a little bit. Okay, here we are. Remember this strong lane versus weak lane concept? If you're in a weak lane, it is essential to pull. You can see right here, need to pull. And if you're in a weak lane against a weak lane, you're just going to want to heavily farm the lane, both sides. So that includes pulling. It's generally good to pull. Maybe you can deny them farm, but it also just helps you farm a bit more. Anytime you're in a weak lane, I recommend starting with a sentry. Because let's say it's weak versus strong. That means you just can't play the lane regularly because they'll just kill you. Or they'll harass you down and then kill you. You just can't stay there. You have to be able to pull. And if they block the pull camp, what are your options? You have to go the lane. And you know what I just said? They're going to beat you up in lane. You have to have this. So you need the sentry so that if you see them block it, you pop it down. It can also help to um, heroes that depend on vision. So like Clockwork wants to be able to see the lane or Pudge. Um, generally, aggressive lanes uh, prefer to have vision so that they can see you when you're running around the jungle and they can go kill you. So that's another reason sentries can be good to have so that you know, if you see them place a ward or if you suspect they have a ward, you can try to de-ward that. You know, if they didn't block the camp, you can use it to try to de-ward a uh, observer. Also good to do because you get golden experience and you reduce their vision, which makes it harder for them to play aggressive. Now, I already kind of explained the weak versus weak where, you know, if they can pull and you can't, you're in big trouble. So you need to make sure you can pull. And in fact, maybe you'll even block their hard camp. Technically, it's your hard camp, but it's the one they'll use to pull. If you block that and keep yours open, now you can pull and they can't. So you're winning the lane. Isn't that great? In a strong lane, you don't really need to have a sentry to start, right? In a strong versus weak lane, you're just going to try to kill them. So you don't really want to spend too much time pulling because you want both of you in lane so that you can try to get kills. And you don't want them to pull. Um, so technically, I guess you could block their camp if you feel that's necessary. But... I mean, if you see them pull, maybe you can just go kill them because you're strong lane and they're weak. Now, in a strong versus strong lane, you don't need the sentry for the same reason where you're generally going to be fighting. And if you try to go pull too much, then they're just going to go, hey, let's kill this 2v1 carry who just got left alone. You kind of have to be closer to the lane in those cases. So you don't need to have your pull camp as available because we're not going to use it as much. Now, it can be helpful because, again, like I said, you generally want to have the vision advantage if you want to be an aggressive lane. So, like, if you're a strong lane, maybe you also have the ward down there, and maybe they also have the ward down there. So if you can guarantee that, like, you can de-ward theirs, or you can know for sure that they don't have one, then that can work out for you to know, like, oh, I can hide here and then pop out and attack them. In an average lane, or any matchup where it's, like, just one-to-one, -one, well, in a weak versus average, uh, you still need it. But, like, say strong to average or, like, any of that, it can be good to get a sentry. You don't have to get one right away, depending on who's in the lane um, and depending if you feel you need to pull a lot. I might 
buy a sentry to start, but more than likely I would just hold on to it. Like I would be I would queue it up in my quick buy. And after my 600 gold, maybe I get some from the bounty or the uh, passive gold. I might buy a sentry quickly after that if I feel I need it. But I don't plan to necessarily have it in my first 600 gold. And I think that's an important distinction to make. Because if you don't use your first 600 gold for it, you can buy something else that you will use. Wow. That's it for sentries, actually. No, haha. One more thing about sentries. If you need to block a camp... Let's say you're playing against a uh, a Doom, Chen, Enchantress, who else? Marana to an extent. Um, these heroes that greatly benefit from having the small and hard camps available to them. Sometimes you can just block it. Like, it sucks to block your own lane, but it kind of sucks more to have this red tomato hellbear running at you, slapping you. Um, or this harpy just like psh, bolting you every couple seconds. That can be worse than not being able to pull. So potentially, depending on like what level you're in, um, if you're scared of a very good Enchantress or Chen or you know any of those heroes that use those creeps very early, maybe it's worth blocking a camp. And if you're going to block a camp, sentries will work if you can't body block um, consistently for whatever reason. So now that's everything about sentries. Let us move on to salves. The healing salve is kind of the counterpart to the tango, where the tango heals you for a little bit, um, but over a long period of time. And then the salve heals you for a lot pretty quickly. Now the salve is a bit more expensive. It ends up healing you about 400 health. By about, I mean exactly 400 health. And the tango ends up a little less than that. If you use all three over time, you'll end up with about like 350-ish around there. So tangos technically overall heal you a little less, but they're a bit more cost effective because they're cheaper. But the issue here is time. So tangos, one tango is 16 seconds. To use all three is 48 seconds. That entire time, if you're low, means you can't be hitting creeps. So if your carry gets down to about, say, like 200 health, it might be time to use a healing salve, get them up to full, and now they can return to lane. And it only takes 10 seconds to do that. But say you only lost 100 health, or your carry did. They don't necessarily want to use a salve because they'll waste a lot of it. They won't heal for the full 400. And that's where Tango is very useful to just regenerate a little bit over time. But it's important to have this option of quickly healing um, a lot. Because if you're sitting at that like 200 health mark, carries are just, they're going to be scared. They can't approach the lane as much because they might die. Um, and if they can't approach the lane, they're going to miss last hits. And the whole point of them being in the lane is to get those last hits. So we want to be able to keep our carry alive. And I recommend having at least one salve in the lane, whether it's the carry who has one or whether you have one. Um, as long as one of you has one, I think that's pretty good. And we're going to try to use it on the carry if possible. Now, if you get focused a lot and they're just kind of free, they haven't used a lot of their regen, it can be okay to use the healing salve on yourself because... If you were to get bullied out of lane and then not have that healing salve, like you chose to not use it and go back to lane or go back to the fountain, um, then your carry is left in a 2v1 and they can now focus your carry. So in that case, it would be better to use it on yourself so that you can stay and help your carry and keep that fight going. But if, say, both of you were low, I would prioritize the carry because you want them to be in the lane as much as possible. Um, and you can go... Like, you can take the time to tango up slowly and, like, pull, for example. And you have a bit more leeway not standing in the direct line of fire. If we go back to our lanes matchup here, I'll move my camera again. In a weak lane, I would recommend having possibly even two salves. I mean, not on you both. Like, hopefully your carry has one, and then you would also buy one. Um... And if your carry doesn't buy one, then you, you absolutely need to have at least one salve. Um, I would rarely buy two salves at a time uh, because you can always just ferry in another one after the fact. So for sure, you need to have one and hopefully even your carry has one when you're in a weak lane. Because again, it, it's so dangerous because you're weak. You need to farm. You can't waste too much time if you get low health. You just have to be uh, constantly ready to farm and that involves staying healthy. Now in a strong lane, Funny enough, you should also get a salve because you want to fight a lot. And if, let's say you fight, no one dies, okay. 
you're both all all four of you are very low and the enemy heals up you can't keep fighting or they'll kill you and now you just have to be really careful which is really bad for a strong lane because you're meant to be fighting um and if you can't do that you're not a strong lane anymore so you need to have the self be ready to heal up and you know what if you can heal up and they can't you've won the lane essentially because if they try to approach you'll kill them it's very good to have a lot of regen in strong lanes and then in an average lane, that just goes back to what I said before, where I generally think at least one person should have one. Um, and you don't really have to think about it too hard besides that. The last item we want to consider in this mandatory purchase list is the magic stick. And before you get excited thinking that it's going to like justify buying it, uh, it's actually bad. Many of you should not buy this. This is actually like a reverse where you should not buy this with your starting gold, except in a very few specific cases where it gains a lot of value. So let me explain that real quick. If you look at how it works, you gain charges every time someone casts a spell, and you get 15 health and mana. Now, the fact that you get both does make this item a little better, because um, right now I'm going to compare it directly just in terms of health, but to be fair to it, it has a little more value because it also gives you mana. But if we think about health, 15 per charge, so 10, you get 150 health. That's a little better than a tango. Just one tango, by the way, which heals about 112. Um, 200 gold versus the 30 gold of a tango. The gold cost efficiency there is not very good. And with your first 600 gold, you really need to be very cost efficient with your items. We're going to be using these, like especially in like up to the first three to five minutes of the game, I would say. We're really depending on these starting items. So... And we're not getting a lot of value out of the magic stick in those first couple minutes it's not a good starting item purchase and i'll show you the math later but it takes about 50 charges to equal a set of tangos or a salve in terms of gold cost efficiency for the amount of heal you get for the gold spent 50 spell charges so let's look over here what are some heroes that cast a lot of spells but that the individual spell does not do a bunch of damage. And I'll explain why that part matters later. The answer is Bristleback with his Quill Sprays. And if you look, it doesn't do that much damage. 20 damage, and then it builds up stack damage, which that's where it really gets um, going. But even the first two to three casts, it's not too bad. Um, and oftentimes, you may not even be in range. Like if you're going in your carry, like it's not even hitting you. So that's not too bad. And then the other is Bat Rider, where Napalm doesn't actually even like do damage when it hits you, um, but it does give him bonus damage when he finally does. But overall, the spell itself, like it needs to build up a lot of charge. And usually you should be backing away at like two to three before he is tempted to dive you. So you're just getting these like free charges. And when he doesn't even hit you, like even better. Those two heroes specifically, I like to start a stick against when uh with our first starting gold heroes i might consider it are shadow demon because shadow demon is a low cooldown low mana spell so he's going to be using it a lot and it's kind of similar where the first hit like it doesn't hurt that much but when you get hit a couple times it starts to build up and that's kind of bad but we should be looking to start avoiding getting hit uh around like after the first one or two hits and hopefully he's aiming at our I mean, we don't want him to hit our carry, but if it's not hitting us, you know, oh, well, he will cast that a lot. So him alone, I may not buy a stick, but let's say he he's matched up with another um, offlaner that will cast a lot of spells. Then it like maybe it justifies it. Um, but Shadow Demon 4 is not very common, let alone even Shadow Demon 3. So it's not really a big concern. Now, similarly, Undying is not very common as a 3 or 4. But he actually provides a lot of value to the magic stick. Decay does not do a lot of damage on its own. And it actually, you know, it's got a bit of a cooldown level one. But the benefit is that because it steals your strength, it actually increases the value of heals. So if you don't know, the way healing works in this game is that you kind of maintain the, per the percentage of your health when your stats change. So 150 heal from the magic stick, a fully charged one, you know, when you're 700 health, it's okay, but it's not the best. But what if this guy steals your strength to the fact to the point where you're like 300 health? Now, 150 heal is half your man, uh, half your health pool. And when you go back to your original stats, 
it still remains uh, effectively a 50% heal. So that makes it a lot better than against other heroes. I have been testing that out. I kind of like it, but again, he's not that common to see in the three or four position. So anytime he's mashed with uh, a high spell casting offlaner, I think about it. But it's really just those four and really these two, Sand King and, or I'm sorry, um, Bristleback and Batrider that make me want to start a magic stick. Everyone else, I do not think you should start it. Just don't start it. Buy it after the fact. Now, there are a couple heroes that spam spells, but they do too much damage. So, for example, Skyrath. Think about this. Now, Skyrath may not be the best. It's been nerfed a bit, so Q level 1 only does, let's say, 75 damage. let us I don't know. He may have bought some int items. But let's just assume it's 75 damage after reductions. We heal 15 per cast. If this guy casts Arcane Bolt 10 times on us, that's 750 damage we take. Our stick heals us for 150, which means we now have 600 health negative from all his spell casts. What if instead of that 200 gold stick, we had bought a Tango and a Salve? Salve will heal 400, and a Tango, um, about 2 will get us to the rest of the place we need considering our passive regen. But you know what? Let's just throw in all three tangos. And now that equals about 700 damage. So tangos and salve or a magic stick. Tangos and salve were essentially break even from him casting this 10 times. Or a magic stick where we are down 600 health. When a hero casts like spam spells, but the spells do a lot of damage, it's not enough for what the magic stick does to us. The reason these guys work out is because they don't do a lot of damage individually on each cast. And like sometimes the cast isn't even on us. Yeah, sometimes the Skyrath might have been targeting your carry. But again, it's just like, it's not effective when you look at the math. So starting it, um, starting with a stick just doesn't work. If you can correctly identify when you need to purchase those four items, I'd be pretty happy. That's a large part of what I want you to get out of this video. When I say a lane can be lost by just having the wrong starting items, it's usually one of these four items I'm referring to that ended up uh, causing a lane to be lost. So if you know when to buy tangos every game, when to buy a sentry, a salve, a, when you're allowed to buy a magic stick, if you can do that, you'll at least survive most lanes in terms of itemization. If you make a misplay, that's a whole different issue. Um, and I want to point that out where it is very much about staying alive. Tangos, Salve, that's pretty obvious. Um, the Magic Stick, getting a bit of health back from the enemy spell cast. The Sentry Ward, being able to see the invisible heroes that were just harassing us for free before. Or being able to unblock a pull camp so that we're not just forced to be bullied by a strong lane. You know, it was all about staying alive. So if we can identify those items and know that we need to spend our gold on that, that's good. Then. Whatever gold we have left over, we now still consider staying alive, but also consider, you know, how can we actually do well in this lane? Not just survive, but get last hits, maybe even get some hero kills. That would be great. Um, that's kind of how we're thinking about, okay, how do I spend this last 300 gold I have? So let's go over a couple considerations there. The first one I want to point out is wind lace. This is usually not necessary in some lanes. However, if the enemy heroes are people that just need to physically run at you, so like undying, yeah, he can cast a K from a little bit, but the damage doesn't come until he like actually hits you. Um, ogre to an extent, clockwork, these typically melee heroes that just have to literally run towards you to hit you. If you're faster than them, then that can help you survive the laning stage a lot, um, or at least give you more leeway. Many of these heroes will still be faster than you, even if you buy a wind lace, but you know, 20 movement speed, that definitely helps out so that you have a bit more leeway in terms of um, how far you can run out of the tower before they start chasing you and you have to run back. That can be really helpful. And the Ring of Protection can also be quite good. Many people underestimate uh, what armor does for you in terms of effective health. We'll cover that with the math section. That's going to come at the end. But 
you can consider it against a duo of heroes that mainly use physical damage. That might be something you would consider. Ring of Regen, Sage's Mask. Usually you wouldn't start with these unless you plan to buy a headdress or a, or a uh, Ring of Basilius. And again, we'll cover that in the math section. In terms of mana regeneration, your options are usually the Mango and the Clarity. Again, we'll go into more numbers with the, uh, the math section. But as a general rule, you use the Mango when you have to cast a spell at a certain time. So if you're in a strong lane and some guy goes out of position and it's like, I've got to cast this stun right now, you need a Mango to make sure you can secure those kills. And the other side of that is you want to make sure you can save your carry if they're being chased by an offlaner and you have to stun the offlaner or cast a heal on your carry. You need to make sure you have mana. And so I would recommend that's when you have at least one mango. I don't really recommend having more than that, actually. I feel like one mango is generally enough. <clears throat> Another case you might need mangoes is against heroes that can burn mana. So Lion, Invoker, I guess Coddle. Um, it'd be weird to see an anti-mage in your, like if you're in the safe lane as a hard support, but he can burn mana against these heroes that ban burn mana so that you're not usually at a full mana pool, but you'll probably have a little bit um, just still there, then a mango is usually enough to cast at least one spell. So that's when you might need it. And in most other cases, you're going to use a clarity um, because a clarity is more cost effective than a mango. It takes more time, which is the concern because you can't just be sitting in lane because um, otherwise it'll get canceled when an enemy hits you. But as a hard support, we do other things besides just sitting in the lane. Just walking to the small camp, stacking it, and then walking back that's about 20 seconds of our time. So that would be about two thirds of a clarity if we popped it as soon as we started to walk away. So we find times to use a clarity um, if we can to be cost efficient. And if we're in a lane where we have to be there constantly and clarities don't become an option, well then that's where we might buy a couple more mangoes. Um, one other thing on the mangoes is when you need, I mean, it's really the same initial, but like heroes like Crystal Maiden, or Lich, Crystal Maiden, who has high mana cost and like no mana pool. And then Lich, who he can cast his Q a couple times with his mana pool. But to really keep bullying people out, he needs to keep casting it. And that's where having several mangoes uh, is something you might consider when you need to keep casting these spells to constantly harass someone down. And you don't really have time to just sit and clarity up for a little bit. Um, again, considering that this is the first couple uh, minutes of the lane where casting rain sap five times in the first minute or two is a very different effect than casting five brain saps over the course of three or four minutes. Um, putting them all together is what really threatens the offlaner or the support and forces them to back up and use a lot of their own regen or to play safe a bit while they try to heal up. Branches tend to just be like filler, where you don't need like more mana, you don't need more mangoes, and stats are just nice to have. Especially if you plan on buying a wand that game, buying at least two branches can be very nice. Um, fairy fires, not very commonly bought, to be honest, by hard supports. So I'm not even going to talk about it that much. It's similar to the mango, where you need a burst of uh, health. It's very good when, I lied, I'm talking about it. It's very good when you want to bait the enemy team because people forget to check uh, other people's items. So it's like, oh, we can almost kill this guy. Let's like run under tower or like let's keep fighting. Even though we're getting low, we'll kill him first. Totally. And then you pop fairy fire and they're like, oh, I didn't think about this 85 extra health. Now I don't know what to do. And now I'm dead. This is kind of a high level play of baiting people with a fairy fire. So I wouldn't recommend it for most people's starting items, but some heroes can do it. Like, uh, well, Bat Rider's not very popular five right now, but a big part of Bat Rider is baiting people with fairy fire into thinking they can fight you, and then you heal up, and they burn to death. Um, a lot of these, like, we just don't purchase. Circlet, crown, like these. We're not really stat item builders generally as hard supports. Um, and, like, 450 gold, that is a lot 
for just four stats, which would have just been four branches, and then we could have just bought like a bunch of salves, you know? Um, buying these are generally not a consideration for us with our starting gold. Same with like buying one of these, that's really bad. Um, there's no reason to buy a Quelling Blade nowadays. Buying an Orb of Venom, very few fives do that, like uh, Ogre, for example, can do it. Who else? I'm not even sure if there's another one who does it. Yeah. Spirit Breaker 5, maybe. Treant 5, maybe. Um, oftentimes, if you're trying to go aggressive in the lane, the carry is probably the one who should buy the Orb of Venom. Um, Lightstone, I don't think anyone really buys. Sometimes I buy it on Dazzle to be really annoying. Uh, Blightstone gets more value if the enemy already has low armor. So enemy heroes with like two or less armor, that's when a Blightstone has a bit more value because it essentially increases your damage and your teammates' damage by 10%, roughly. Whereas when the enemy offlane and support has like six armor or more, then it has less value to detract that two armor from them. Can't even buy an infused raindrop. None of these. We're not getting any of that. That kind of covers just about all the starting items. Some people get smokes, um, but like really you're not going to use it, right? In the first couple minutes, you're just not going to use a smoke. At high level play, they will buy a smoke very early to start getting it on cooldown, but most people really don't need to buy a smoke right off the bat. Same with dust of appearance. Like just buy a sentry if you want to buy a dust. Uh, there's just like this will last you eight minutes for a lane whereas this if you don't get a kill you just like what did you just spend 80 gold on uh and then it's gone so that kind of covers oh yeah and then these so these people do buy but not the buckler that's not so common these i'm going to cover in the math section so i think we can just move to that buying boots is very rare buying this is the last thing i'll cover i guess so one set of tangos and boots this is very rare to do as the position five and you really need to know why you're doing that in order to get away with it so i'm not going to cover that here because i just don't think most people should do that without really understanding the game um so yeah let's go on some math math is fun we're about to talk about some real nerd stuff here which is math so you don't have to watch this part, honestly. Um, like I said, those first four items are really a big part of it. And everything else, you can go a bit more by like gut feeling and like the stuff I explained before. But I do think the easiest way to explain why you might, you know, might why you might want a headdress or a ring of Basilius and therefore a ring of regen or sage's mask. I think the easiest way is to show it by math. So that's what this is. And to justify some claims I made earlier. Um, actually real quick let me explain the orb of venom here that i realized i kind of brushed over in the last part i recorded so the reason you get orb of venom first of all you only get it on a melee hero because it's 15 percent slow for melee only you don't really care about the damage it does um but if someone had say 270 move speed and you hit them as a melee hero they lose 40 move speed that's crazy you know, if they at 330, that's the high end of move speed by base move speeds, 50 move speed. If they happen to be like Pugna and buy boots and you hit them, this is more than a boot is worth. So that's why Orb of Venom can be good if you're playing a bit more of a aggressive lane and maybe your carry didn't want to buy a Orb of Venom themselves. Um, so it's not really very common for the five to buy it. But like I said, there's only a couple melee supports that will do it. And it's just so that you can chase down the enemy team a little better and just keep whacking them um but with that let's go into the rest of the the nerd math so straight into it let me just explain this real quick if it's not obvious here's the cost of an item the item itself and then how much it regenerates the duration it takes to do that or whatever i've put in um and then the total regeneration you get from that and then this is dividing the total hp you get by the cost so this is your like hp per gold per gold you are spending so straight off a single single tango, one of the charges, gets you 112 health. So all three, 336. And uh, you can see that when we compare that with, say, a salve, you know, it's a pretty close comparison in terms of gold, uh, HP per gold, because this is a little cheaper, but you get a little less HP. 
like uh, in terms of raw health, either would work. But for the reasons I explained previously, like you want one or the other, and oftentimes you want to have both. So tangos to just casually regenerate, and then a salve when you really need it. Now, something you can do is to use a tango on a iron branch. The iron branch being 50 gold, the tango being 30, but it doubles up the amount of regeneration time you get. So it's kind of like having two tangos. So in terms of overall gold efficiency, it's not as good. But the reason it might be still something you want to do is say, say you had four tangos. Um, by using an iron branch, it's kind of like having five tangos, but without having to spend that like extra 90 gold. You spent 50, but you did get to keep that one extra stat for, you know, the first three tangos you used, and then you had that, um, then you used one of your branches. And for example, if you buy three iron branches, you only need two for the um, magic wand. So you just have a third branch that isn't going to build into anything. So you can just use it for regeneration if you want. Um, it's not that bad. 2.8, you know, it's not that much worse than this. Now here's why the magic stick is bad. Look at this. 0.75 HP per gold you spent when compared to a tango or a salve and even an iron branch tango. It's just not good. So I say 750. Um, so this would be the equivalent of the 50 charges I was talking about to get to 3.75. And this is why over the course of the game, this is a lot of value. Like these are consumables, so you don't get them. Whereas the magic stick, you get to keep it forever. And that's why over the course of the game, it gets a lot more value. You know, we use it however many times. Like, we are getting a lot of value out of the item. But just thinking about those first 10 minutes where, like, maybe you get five charges out of it. So you get 75, like, health. Now, granted, technically, you multiply it by two because you get both health and mana. But thinking strictly in terms of staying alive, it's just, like, it's just so bad, you know? We could have had so much more health. Instead of 75 health, for 200 mana we could have had both of these we could have had 400 and 336 for a tango and a salve and when we're thinking about those first few minutes like that is so much better value looking at ring of regen which is currently 1.75 hp per second for a cost of 225 so here's for 10 seconds like a salve would be um and then here is how long it would be for like a tango so obviously it is way less than like a tango for 16 seconds versus a ring of regen. So in terms of speed, like this is even worse than a tango. Like a tango is slower than a salve and this is slower than a tango. But the reason the tango is better than the salve is because, because you can have it for so long and slowly get more value of it. But now the ring of regen does not get consumed. You just keep it. So imagine if you keep it like a full minute Having it for a full minute is kind of like having another tango. So what if in the first five minutes I said, here is five tangos? Like That's kind of what a ring of regen represents. And if you have it over that five minutes, like um, you're actually getting more value uh, out of it than, say, buying all the tangos. And then over like the course of 10 minutes, like you see it's just like slowly increasing in value. Um, as the game goes on. So in 10 minutes, um, you would have regenerated 1,050 health. That's like, what if I told you, here is two salves and two tangos. Um, that feels great to have in terms of consumables, but you're just going to keep this even longer, forever and ever, because it's not a consumable. You just keep it. Value. And that's why headdress is good. Um, headdress is a little bit more regen. And in terms of just yourself, it's not worth it. Um, you know, because it's only 0.25 better than Ring of Regen all for 200 more. So it's not that much better. The reason it's so good is because it now becomes an aura and it affects your carry. And so, first off, over the course of 10 minutes, it's like I gave you three salves. But now it's like I gave you three salves and I gave your carry three salves to use over that 10 minute period. That is great. Uh, this is why this item was really popular. And then it got nerfed to the point where it is now. So now it's not so popular. Some people still get it. And this is why when you think of it in terms of like comparing item values, like it just gets better over time. Now, the downside of a headdress in the safe lane is that like we're going to go pull. We're going to go to 
other lanes. We're going to do stuff. And then we're not going to be next to our carry. Which, like I just said, is like the value came from being in an aura. So if we're by ourselves in the jungle or roaming around or whatever, it's just not as good. But it's good again then because a lot of the time we leave the safe lane to go to the off lane where we chill with our position four and our off laner to take that tower. And now there's three of us getting that aura. And then later in the game, when we all group up, there's going to be like four or five of us. So the headdress is quite a nice long-term investment when you don't need a lot of immediate regen and you need more regen over time. So like when you're against enemies like Necrophos or maybe Clinks, they don't really burst you down in the laning stage. They just kind of slowly chip away at you over a long period of time. And that's when having long-term investments like Headdress might be preferable to just buying a lot of consumables. Now, the opposite of that is when the enemy has a lot of high burst and they are buying enough mana to keep using it. So when you're against like Sky Wraths or Hugnas, um, people who just keep bursting you over and over again, this is when buying consumables and being very cost, effic uh, cost effective in the short term is necessary because you just you can't just let them keep blasting you for like 200 damage each time you just have to heal up quickly um and that's where these long-term investments are not worth your time the last two things to talk about here are the fairy fire and the mango i don't really have to talk about them actually because the fairy fire i already explained a bit you can see it's just not co as cost effective as a tango or a salve but the reason we do it is because it's so instantaneous it's immediately upon use 85 health um and then mangoes have 0.6 regen but the thing is so like here over the course of five minutes 180 you know for one mango it's like it's not that great in terms of regen it's like okay but we're not really planning around it and the benefit of mangoes is that they do stack so what if we got three we had 1.8 we had three mangoes for five minutes about a salve's worth like that's okay but the reason we buy mangoes is to be able to cast our spells so if you're just holding your mangoes for like five minutes like why did you buy this mango then like i explained the reason you use the mango is because like i gotta cast this spell right now i gotta get this kill or i have to keep up quick harass i didn't buy it to just hold it for five minutes and get hp regen so i wanted to show it there so that you could realize that but you know, it's nice to have, but it's not its not why we buy the item. Let's come over here to mana regen now. So we have the mango right over here. You can see the mango is not actually that cost effective in terms of mana per gold, whereas the clarity is very cost effective when you can get it for the full period. And so, like, for example, if you only had it for 10 seconds, you know, it's not so valuable. In terms of getting the same amount of gold, as the uh, return of mana per gold as the mango, you only need 13 seconds. I said all this, 18 seconds to have a uh, the same amount of mana as a mango. And then again, if you just have it the whole time, it's just more cost effective, more mana, but it takes more time. So it's really about finding whether you're a hero that can take the time to go pull and stack and whatever, or if you're a hero that just like constantly needs to be in the way of danger. Are you an ogre magi with a specter where you're just like, I just need to be in the line of fire the whole time. I can't really afford to get clarities or I can't afford to get that many. Usually in the lane, by the way, when I say you can start with these, you're really just getting one, maybe one mango, one clarity, um, maybe two mangoes, three mangoes, if you want to stack them up and have them. But there's really no need to buy multiple clarities. You're only buying one because if you need more, you can just bury it in. Having this one clarity is just like... Uh, throw out all your spells and then you're going to go do that one minute pull um or the pull at like one minute 12 seconds ish 17 seconds ish depends um that is when you are aiming for that so or like that's why you would have this first clarity sorry now to compare the magic stick again this is the same values as before but just like just see how bad this is compared to the clarity it's a little better in terms of like having a mango uh so when you need when it is a game where you can get a magic stick you might be able to justify saying like oh maybe i maybe i don't need a mango and oftentimes i skip a mango 
Um, so like against Bristleback, I don't really buy mana regeneration except maybe a clarity because when I'm near Bristleback, I, he would just cancel my clarity. So I don't need, I'm not going to be using that. And because he's going to cast so many spells, like this magic stick is kind of going to be my mango. Um, so I don't really need to have both. And then when I finally leave the lane, I'll just use the clarity for the long-term uh, regeneration. Magic wand I have in here too, but like, it's not really a starting item. Please don't start. If you're starting with it, that's like really bad. Don't do that. If you want to build into it, that's okay. But at most, you should buy a magic stick plus two iron branches and then buy the recipe later. Now here's the Sage's Mask for the sake of comparison. Here's the Ring of Basilius. Same as before. Don't mind me. Drinking water. Um, where if we compare, like having a Sage's Mask for one minute, we get 60 mana. Like we have to have this for three minutes to have one clarity's worth um, of mana, which was done in 30 seconds. So long term, it's just slow but the more we have it the better it gets you know if we have the sages mask for 10 minutes that's 600 mana that's not so bad right now oftentimes you don't just sit at a sages mask the reason you get it is for the ring of basilius because one this is just straight up better right 1.4 to one so that arguably 84 mana every minute depending on your hero that might be one extra spell you get to cast a minute maybe every two minutes uh for some of the higher mana cost spells but the real benefit is the fact that it it is an aura to your carry. So if they are, I don't know, like a Clinks or a Drow who they want to use mana, but they don't necessarily want to buy their own mana regeneration, then a Ring of Basilius can be really nice so that they can keep casting their spells. And now you can just double the value of this, right? Where um, both you and your carry are getting it. And again, later you go to the offlane, all three of us are getting it. And then you group up with a full team. Everyone's getting it. It's the long-term investment. Uh, and because usually you can afford to buy a clarity. So like, you're not just depending on this for your mana regeneration. You are combining both. So instead of needing a clarity and then buying an extra mango in the laning stage, you just start with the Sage's Mask and then also have a clarity. And the Sage's Mask kind of replaces your need to have a mango. You don't have to buy as many consumable... Uh, regen throughout the laning stage. And raindrops are, I just want to show, they're strictly worse than a Sage's Mask in terms of just mana regeneration. The reason you would get a raindrop is because, say for example, you don't want to actually build anything with the Sage's Mask. Um, like you have a Ring of Basilius and you want a little bit more mana regen. And so it's like, I could buy a Sage's Mask and then just sell it later. Like, I guess that's okay. Or I could get a raindrop, which is just about as effective, and it has the damage block, uh, which helps you survive. So if they don't have too many spells that can get you uh, can get your raindrops broken, then it can be a decent investment because eventually it will break, and it's like, okay, I needed that slot anyways. This was just a temporary thing, and it protected me from this much health. But you don't want it against people who can break it easily and who will break it without using the full damage block. So the way the damage block works is it blocks anything above um, 50 damage will proc it and it can block up to 120. So anything that is between 120 and 50 is not cost effective. So this would be good against, say, Zeus's Thunderbolt, where he will proc the full 120 damage block. But against, like, Disruptor, who each Thunderstrike... The first Thunderstrike will proc the cool the raindrop block, but it won't even use the full 120. And then um, the, the raindrop has a bit of a cooldown, but by the time it's off cooldown, the Thunderstrike from Disruptor is still going and will proc your raindrops again. Um, so you're like not getting the best efficiency out of it and it's getting broken really quickly. That's when it's not so nice. But it is nice to have like that little bit of... Uh, burst damage survivability against heroes like I was going to say Queen of Pain but she's actually a bad example because her dagger will just destroy your raindrops. Lena. Lena's a good example where you just survive some of her nukes when she happens to see you and she might miscalculate trying to kill you. We are almost done. I promise. Here's armor. I just want to do a quick demonstration of what I was talking about earlier. If you don't understand what effective 
uh, health is. I recommend looking at the Dota wiki over that. 800 is a little high. Let's go to like 600. So if you have 600 health and two armor, your effective HP is 670, two physical damage anyways. If you were to buy that Ring of Protection for 150 gold, that would bring you up to four armor, which would now give you 741 effective HP, which is an increase of 71 uh, between these two. So essentially you have 71 more HP than you did before by buying that Ring of Protection. <laughs> now, if instead we didn't buy that Ring of Protection and we say we buy Gauntlet of Strength, which just gives plus three strength, that gives us 660 HP. And with our two armor, we are now at 737, which is only a 67 uh, increase in effective HP compared to this one. Now, if we actually buy three iron branches instead of a gauntlet of strength, gauntlet of strength we wouldn't buy as a hard support. I'm just using it as a like gold comparison. Now, if you actually buy the iron branches, which is more likely what a support would buy, you also actually increase your armor by a little bit. So not only do you get the health, but you've also increased your armor a little bit which brings your effective HP up to 756, uh, which as you can see is an 86 increase from the 670, which is better than just an iron, uh, iron ring of protection. Depending on your health though, this is why I was at 800 before, eventually buying armor is better than buying something that gives you health or just health and armor. Um, because there is a diminishing return on armor so the higher armor you have the less value it is to buy more armor and it's actually better to buy health and then the other way if you don't have a lot or if you have what am i saying if you have a lot of health it is better to buy more armor instead of buying more health um, to get a better effective hp return so at 800 health and two armor buying a ring of protection would give you 95 more effective health Whereas buying that gauntlet of strength would only be 67, or buying those three branches would be 91. This is why you frequently see people buy iron branches rather than like any of those other options I just mentioned. Because it's just a little better. Like 600 is a pretty average starting HP for a lot of supports. Uh, and you'll just see, like the three iron branches just gives you the most value in terms of um, effective health against right click. And the fact that you're getting health is also effective against magic damage. And then, you know, a bit more mana pool. This is why iron branches are pretty value in the early game. And then that's the orb of venom stuff. That's it. That's starting items covered in like probably an hour combining all of these. Um, it's a bit tedious, I know. And the annoying thing is that the math frequently changes. <clears throat> but now you can at least kind of understand where that logic comes from like i really i don't know how to explain that ring of basilius is good without explaining like this math i could probably just say like oh it's because it's an aura that would probably have been enough and save myself 20 minutes but i think if you're serious about supporting like serious about improving you need to consider this kind of thing like this like gold return like obviously i don't know these these numbers i'm like ah 2.87 on this gold but just understanding the like relative value of different items and why they're better, why immediate solutions are better than like long term or vice versa, that is what you need to understand from this math stuff. So that's it for this video. Next one we'll cover like the more fun item choices of like four staff or glimmer or stuff like that. Um Yeah. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna put up a checklist here of like what you should run and ask yourself every game which is pretty much just going to be those four mandatory items. And then you can just follow this checklist guide, I think, here. So that's that. Thank you for watching. I can't think of anything funny to end on. Bye.